Hello and welcome to the Work for Change podcast. My name is John and it's spelled like Jean. And my name is John with a silent H. Welcome to episode number 34. Yeah, episode number 34. We're 34 weeks into the podcast. 35 weeks in. No, 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 because we actually had one episode. Remember one week when we went two in a row? Oh, yeah. With that special Noah Rosen episode? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. So, you know what? We overtimed one week. Yep. So that this week, we can actually take a week off. Yeah. So, last week, there was no podcast. Want to talk about that? Yeah, so we, I was talking to Jean, and one, we just, we felt, I mean, this is going to get real, real fast, but we just felt like we were, yeah, welcome to the podcast. We just felt like we were kind of going through the motions not like we were sick of it because i i can only i can only speak for myself it's one of my favorite things i do all yeah week. me too and so when you feel like you can't give one of your favorite things like when you feel like you're not giving that as mm-hmm. much like respect and time and whatever as it deserves that gets that's like its own form of draining yeah you know what I mean? it was like, stressing me out like it, yeah. I, I felt stressed out that i wasn't excited to record the podcast because we were like usually we try and for the past couple of while, we've been, we've been recording on Mondays, and then we would it, the podcast would come out on Tuesdays. Jean is the co-host slash producer of the podcast, so that basically means he does all the editing. <laughs> um, so he's the one that has he that's the work that workload falls on him, right? So the podcast is an hour a week for Jean, mm-hmm. and it is. More than that. For Jean, <laughs> for yeah. Me. yeah. Yeah, And so I, I kind of felt bad about that, too. So it was like, I think it was Monday last week, I, I texted John. I was like, hey, do you want to just take a week off? And he was like, at first, he was like, I, I don't know, kind of, maybe. And I was like, I just don't feel like we're, we both are putting 100% in. And so that's kind of why we decided to take a week off. All right, you want to know some behind-the-scenes action? Yeah, let's hear it. Um, even behind the scenes of you. Okay. Um, <laughs> of me? Yeah. No, not of you. But Sam and I were talking that weekend, and she was, like, talking to me, like, why are you guys just going through the motions on your podcast? Like, you have so much, like, value. You have so much potential. You have so much that could be going for the podcast, and you guys just keep on, like, oh, we need to uh, uh, yeah. go upload. Like, she's like, why are you doing that? Like, you she was literally on my case in a nice way. I love you, babe. About um, like you. Yeah, you know she's listening. One hundred percent. Yeah, and it's only been like two minutes in, so she hasn't gotten distracted yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, squirrel. Yeah. So it's like um, she was literally like on, like in the nice, in the best way, like in a caring way on my case. Like I don't understand why you're not meeting more, pursuing more, yeah. like pushing it more. Like if you love doing this, then push it. And so I kind of already had that weight on me about this Monday. Like it was super busy. Um, I just officially got hired at the church. And so I've been doing that plus all this other stuff. And so I just had the, all this like kind of like weight, like you're right. I need to do this right. And then you sent me that text like, Hey, do you really want to do the podcast today? And at first I was like, is this a personal attack? What do you mean? Yeah, do yeah. I want to do the podcast yeah. today? Of course, I want to do the podcast today. And then as we were more talking about it, I was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, let's let's kind of switch our recording day because Mondays, like Monday we film at one, literally the rest of my night is podcast. Mm-hmm. Like not just like, oh, I clock off at five, I'm good. No, my night is now dedicated to the podcast, making sure it's up by 12 a.m. Tuesday morning. Yeah. And so kind of switching the day we do things, stacking up more episodes so that we can just release them um but making sure that stacking them in the sense that it's people that we care about and people that we want instead of just people to fill an episode yeah which we haven't had anyone yet Mm -hmm. but there that runs the risk of doing that and like i know (laughs) some of the people that might be listening to this are probably not at all interested in this but we just we it was hard for us to take a week off like it i felt bad but at the same time luckily nobody really complained on social media or anything like that which made me happy but one person left yeah, me a comment yeah same here and <laughs> like, uh, it wasn't them complaining they were just like hey, hey where's the podcast yeah. and so that makes us really happy but it's just important for us to want to do this and be excited about it so that's kind of why uh, we did that i think moving forward we we really want to have different types of people on the podcast you know we love having the CrossFit Games athletes and stuff like that. But I, I know personally for me, I love reading and I would love to try try and get some of these authors of the books that I read. I say try because I'm sure – I know authors do a bazillion podcasts and I'm not sure how, how much interest they would have coming on here. But I would I, – I know I – this is like – it's like almost a selfish thing. I know I would get a lot out of talking to them. <laughs> so I'm like that's, I really want them to come on the podcast. But, I mean, that's the best. Like if you know that you're going to – add value to your life through the mm-hmm. podcast you're going to approach it in a way that's different 
And it's going to be, you're going to be learning in a way that other people learn. You know, instead of like having this teaching mindset, you have this learning mindset. And when you have a learning mindset, you ask different questions. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's good. I think it's for the benefit. There's an author that I um, was talking with and then tried to get on. And as soon as I was like, hey, podcast, I got left on red. Yeah. <laughs> he goes so to you. it's harder than it looks. <laughs> to yeah. get, but we're going. We're doing it's, this. I mean, it's understandable. Like I said, they probably get so many requests. But yeah, so like the kind of the, the way that we were looking at it is like, right, when you talk about working out, it's really important to have rest days. So for us, it was like a rest week. It's not like it took... It was not like it took that much time off of, off of our plates by not doing the podcast, but it was just nice to not feel like we had to stress and get one out and maybe not be super proud of it, right? Yeah. That would be a disservice to us and as well, more importantly, a disservice to the people listening. So. Do you remember what month we started? Was it November? I think it was November, yeah. So, I mean, over half a year. Yep. Over half a year and we decided to take one week off. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. And too. like I said, we had one in the cache. We mm -hmm. had one ready because we did the bonus one during Christmas. Um, okay, so, mm, sorry, I uh, got some fizzy in my, in, in my yeah, so I got John, some fizz, fizzy in my throat. John right now is drinking the new Rain, <laughs> sponsored by Rain, no, it's not, um, mm -mm. the new Rain, like, energy drinks that are made, I think they're made by Monster, right? It's that called is correct. Total Body Fuel, and it's, a, I mean, it's a complete ripoff of Bang Energy, but the 100%. thing, the thing that creeps me and scares me is, on that bottle that you're holding right now, on the can, it says in very bold letters, turn around, turn around, towards what? me. What? Yep, more, more, more. There we go. It says, recommend, this is in very large text. Read it out loud, what that says right there. Recommended for a person 18 years or older. But it's like in massively large text. I feel like all energy drinks say that. Do they? Yeah. Does this one say that? That's not an energy drink. Well, there's energy in it, though. You're holding a... That is a performance This drink. is a knocko. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Fine. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm sounding like an old person that was like uh, when Monsters first came out. They were like freaked out about them. So when I was in junior high is when, is when the energy drink craze. Like, yeah, same. Like broke loose. And my favorite energy drink was the Lost Energy Drink. Oh, and this was yeah. like this was before like there weren't like energy drink companies yet. I mean, there was Red Bull, mm -hmm. but like... That was about it. Like Red Bull, ugh. I don't get how people like. I can't. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had a Red Bull? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, they're not the best. But, not good. Um, they, for the most part, energy drink companies were just like skate or performance companies that created an energy drink, like Lost. Like even Monster started off like I don't think it started off as an energy drink. I'm not gonna. Maybe I have no it idea. Did. I think it probably um, did. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But there no were a whole bunch of brands that were just putting their name into energy drinks. And mm -hmm. I, I liked the Lost Energy just because it had the coolest bottle. It did. It had that all was, those little tiny sketches. Remember yeah. that was like a popular style with like the little mini sketches, but it was just like, like tons of the them. Yeah, yeah. I had a jacket that had them all. Yeah. And so um, what I, that was when everyone was like, energy drinks are the worst thing in the world for mm -hmm. you. Like... There's no way that you should be drinking energy drinks every single day. Oh my gosh, you're going to kill like your heart. Hear stories you're going to do all that of, stuff. Yeah. You'd hear the stories like, oh, someone drank two and died from yeah. a heart attack in one day. Yeah. And so <laughs> um, when I was in junior high, I would go in and it got to a point where the 7 Eleven started asking for IDs for mm -hmm. energy drinks and you couldn't get them after school anymore. And I was so upset and I was so angry. And it got to a point one time, this was when I graduated high school, um, I had like, I was like, overly drinking energy drinks, overly drinking caffeine. And I remember laying in bed one day and my heart was just like doing double beats and like palpitating. And mm -hmm. I was like, this isn't right. This isn't right. And I was literally laying in bed, like Googling, am I dying? Because, <laughs> it, because it was like, you, my, my heart was doing like the, like, like double. And I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And after that, I've never done two energy drinks on the same day. It was really? like it was like two energy drinks in rapid succession. Oh, okay. Like I drank it, I was like I'm still not quite awake. Drank another one. Yeah, and that was the white monster. So it was even it was like after they've been out for a while and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember my like story with energy drinks. It was kind kind of similar uh, as far as like how I got into them. So when I was in junior high, one of the things that for some reason it was really popular to buy an energy drink. And then, like, because I would, al we'd always get to school really early, just because mom had to take us there really early, um, or like this is before we were riding our bikes there, yeah. um, and or even when we were riding our bikes there, we would get there early because you don't want to be late. Yeah. You know? And and I think part of it for me was because of how much I sweat. I wanted to get there early so I'd like stop sweating. Oh, before I just class. Had, all my friends would hang out. And we'd yeah. all hang out before. Yeah. So, so I would just get there early. So everyone would have energy drinks, but everyone drank monsters. Everyone. And I was like. 
I'm gonna be different, right? So I would drink rock stars. Uh-huh. Do you, do those exist anymore? Do oh, rock yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay. Um, and but this this was again before there was flavors of it. It was just there was yeah. one flavor. It was the yeah. monsters were black and green, and rock stars were black and like Gold. bronze or something like yeah. that. And I still like I remember I would buy the rock star. I thought it tasted horrible, but I just wanted to look cool, so I would drink it anyways. And it was like a big one, like maybe the size of the one that you have. Yeah. Maybe like the twenty four stand- ounces or something size, like that. Sixteen. Sixteen. I think they might have been even bigger. I think I might have been getting the bigger ones. And I remember they were two bucks. And I would drink. I would drink it, and I would drink most of it. And then towards the end, I would just be like, get so sick of the taste that I would throw it away. But I remember, like, uh, I think where there were seven periods. By the time like fifth period came, I was I would crash so hard that I felt like I was gonna fall asleep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, something that that all the kids would do would get to school early, and then everyone would play hacky sack. And I was really bad. <laughs> I think it was because I was overweight, so it was like hard for me to get my leg up. Uh-huh. And so I was always like, I didn't play. I just like watched. And then they would try and the kids would try and like kick the hacky sack and knock people's drinks out of their hands. That oh, was like a thing that they okay. were. I was wondering where hacky sack tied in with energy drinks. Yeah, that's that was <laughs> that was the tie-in. Um, energy drinks were also really big in my retail days mm-hmm. when I was working retail. Um, at one point, we had to do like an all-night inventory count. Oh, um, those are the worst. And so, but when it's a whole bunch of fun people who don't want to be true. there, that's true. You're just like messing around. That's you know true. what I mean? And so we did an energy drink cocktail where we bought a serving glass, like a big serving bowl, like yeah. a, like a punch bowl, and then we just did every flavor of energy drink that Walmart sold, <laughs> and we just put it in one, and we were like had a serving ladle, and we had cups, and we were just drinking it while we were doing inventory, and that was also a bad idea. Did you ever uh, when you went to like? Uh, 7-Eleven or AMPM, did you ever do what they call the suicide? With the sodas? Mix every single flavor. Yeah, I used to do, I used to do that all the time. But it wasn't at 7-Eleven, it was at um, Taco Bell. <laughs> oh my gosh. Taco Bell has made a return. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get the Baja Blast in there, man. So someone d- uh, oh messaged my God. us. No, it was on Twitter. On Twitter? Yes. Yeah, it was on Twitter. <sighs> and um, they said... It made me laugh. They were like, um, I think that the Taco Bell talk has had the opposite effect because now I am at Taco Bell or something like no, that. No, no. So th- what the tweet was, it was like basically they've said, uh, you know, John and John has said Taco Bell maybe 80 times in there uh, in the beginning of this episode. And now I'm at Taco Bell or something. Oh, like yeah. And then I like retweeted it and I said, this is not what was supposed to happen. And then I retweeted that and said, <laughs> this, is this is exactly <laughs> what was supposed to happen. Anyway, <laughs> so I used to do it at Taco Bell because, so, again, I was there every single day. Yeah, I used to go to Taco Bell after school. Like, that's where I would hang out because I used to go to this uh, place called Youth Venture, which is like a teen center, basically. But Sponsored it by the church. It, yeah. was, it was like a, it was kind of like a, hey, what we'll do is instead of you guys committing crimes on the street, you yeah. hoodlums, yeah. what we'll do is we'll create this uh, teen center where you can play DDR mm-hmm. um, and you were surprisingly a beast at it. Yep. And we'll or, talk about that too. or ping pong or video games or they had everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, couches just yeah. to chill on, a snack bar. And if you just hang out here, you, first of all, you're not committing crimes on the street. Second of all, we'll, we'll do these incentives where you do like a Bible study with one of the leaders and then now you're a member. Mm-hmm. And then you do a Bible study, now you get $10 <laughs> off the snack bar or yep. whatever it was. But it was like, it was a way to just, it was a, it's a great idea. Like yeah. get kids off the streets, give them something to do after school. It didn't cost any money. Mm-hmm. Um, but there inevitably were also people who were like, oh, cool, I'm going to go commit crime <laughs> and then go to you and yeah. beat, beat those kids up and yeah. stuff like that. It was always, it was fun. Yeah. So I would, I would always go to, I would literally go to Taco Bell after school and hang out there for like an hour and wait until you venture open. Cause it like, didn't open until three. I got out of school like around one, like towards the end of my high school, like, cause mm-hmm. we, we got out pretty early. Um, and I would. I would hang out <laughs> at Taco Bell. I had no money, so I couldn't buy anything. So I would, I would like try and find change. And they had this game where you'd put a quarter in. It, it could be a quarter dime or a nickel. Like if you, the higher, the more money you like you put in, the more the better of a prize you could get. Yeah. So I think if it was a nickel, so you got was, like the cinnamon twist. Yeah, nickel was cinnamon twist. Dime was taco. And then yeah, quarter, quarter was, was a burrito. So I would try and find like like change, and I would play the game. And I was really bad at it. So I would barely ever win. And then I remember one time 
I was again. This is big me, right? This is chubby John David. I I, I was wa- like, I want you to know that I won the game almost every day. Yeah, I know you were really good at it. I wasn't very good at it, <laughs> but I would uh, I would talk to the because I became like I guess you could say friends with the people that worked there. So I would like try and get free <laughs> free stuff from them. Yeah. But then one time, one of the guys he was not having it, and he was like kind of like giving it back to me. And there was someone behind me, and he realized what was happening, and he was like are you trying to get free food right now? Like, and I just remember the guy that was working behind the counter, like felt bad for me because the guy started like almost like kind of making fun of me, Uh but it was my fault. But that was funny. But yeah. So youth venture, let's talk about that. So you said that there was DDR there. And so DDR was actually, if you don't know what DDR, it's dance dance revolution. So it's that game that there's the pads on the ground and you see the, the arrows and like, you know what I mean? You tap the arrows with your feet, with your feet. Yeah. And so, that game was the first thing that made me realize I actually have like rhythm, and then that's how I got into drumming. Oh, uh, but yeah, I yeah. sucked at that game. Yeah, and, I was, and you're really bad at drumming, so it all makes sense. I'm not bad at drumming. <laughs> Just not good. <laughs> it's true. Um, so I would uh, I would go and I would play that game. And that was like the first form of like, I, well, I guess after like skateboarding. But like as far as like exercise is concerned, w- if you play that game and you get really good, it is a good workout. Yeah. Like it for real is. And so I would, I w- it was just crazy. People would come and they would watch me and it would blow their minds because they'd see this, you know, at the time I was maybe 250, 275, but again, I was shorter than I am now, maybe even close to 300 pounds towards the end. Um, and they would see me like, Literally, I would. Th- so there was different levels, right? And the hardest level that not even every song had this level, but the hardest level was called Oni, mm-hmm. right? And not what again. What does that mean? It's I don't know. Oni. Uh, Oni. Yeah. O N I. For some reason, mm-hmm. I don't know why it's called that. There'd be like hard, medium, hard, very hard, and Oni. I guess Oni. or something like that. And I would play some of the songs on that, but I would literally be dripping in sweat, dripping in sweat, and people would just like watch me and they would be blown away. But the funny thing is. Because I got so used to playing on the pads that they had at Youth Venture, which were, like, flat, just, like, flat pads, whenever I would try and go and play at, like, an arcade, they had, like, the real legit, like, uh, yeah. setup, right? And the, the pads would be, like, kind of depressed into the ground because they're, like, a legit, like, metal thing. And so, like, you had to lift your feet up a little bit more. <laughs> I was terrible. Uh-huh. I would, like, for some reason, because I got so used to just sliding my feet, so, like, just trying to lift my feet up, like, even a quarter of an inch, like, I, would, I was, wasn't able to... So I would never like play at arcades or anything like that. Yeah, that's my story of DDR. Um, I w- <laughs> I'm just like all those type of games, like Guitar Hero, all that stuff. I just I'm not good at. Do you like, think it's because your depth perception? Me, I don't know. I just like it's the whole like tap the button at the uh-huh. same time as the thing you see the thing. For some reason, something about that. I'm just like, Argh. yeah, Argh. like I have no clue how to do it. Um, but speaking about ten years ago, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great great segue tran- transition. Um. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, I am a just, I'm a culture. I am culture, okay? <laughs> I am I am culture person- personified in a way that is just absolutely just insane. And so I am, know everything that's happening when it comes to trending. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I love that word trending. It doesn't send chills down my spine at all. Mm-hmm. I am, I care much about. You um, should uh, get it tattooed on you. Trending, yeah, yeah. Like, just if I hear the word Kardashian, I'm in, you know, mm-hmm. because I just want to be a part of what's happening. Um, and what's happening right now is this happened last year and it's happening again. It's a hashtag called 10 year transformation. Hashtag 10 year transformation. And what people are doing is they're posting what they looked like 10 years ago versus what they looked like now. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, all the ones that are getting all the traction are like the celebrities because they post it and everyone's like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. I feel like so incredible. Um, which I just like, whatever, Ugh, don't care that much. I mean, I care much about because I <laughs> care about trending. Um, but I kind of wanted to talk about it. It's the idea of who were you 10 years ago, especially like what did you think fitness was 10 years ago versus how you are today? And then it's like the whole idea is that life, you are constantly progressing. You are constantly growing and learning in life. Hopefully no one listening here is static. Hopefully mm-hmm. no one like that is That would be so depressing to like be the same person you were 10 years ago today. Now you can find the same values, same, find the same things important, but hopefully you've grown and you've progressed in that. But even if you used to think one thing and now you're a completely different person 10 years ago, like that's called life. Mm -hmm. We grow. It is not just some like easy linear pattern, but it is all over the place. So I was just thinking about 
what were we, first of all, what did we look like 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. What was our mindset 10 years ago? And what were our goals 10 years ago? So I'll start and then you can go. Let's hear it. Okay. So 10 years ago, I was 2019. I was, I had graduated. I had just graduated. No. Oh my gosh. I'm like 11 years out of high school. I was one year out of high school. So, so how, how old were you? I was 19 10 years ago. I am 29 now. That is how math works. Mm -hmm. um, and I was an intern at Foothills Christian Church. And um, basically that means I was a paid slave. <laughs> yeah. But at least I was paid. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because that was not the case for a lot of other churches. A lot of times they have interns and it's you don't get paid. Um, I was an intern at Foothills Christian Church. And I was doing what everyone asked me to do. There was one time where I was driving a, like, big van, but it was a cargo van, um, and they had just packed the thing full with um, just, like, tables and chairs and popcorn machine and this and that and this and that, and I had to go. I had to pack that by myself, and then I was driving home, and when I hit the brakes, one of the tables slid, and since there was no guardrail or anything, it hit me in the back of the head, went forward, cracked the windshield, and, like, pinned me against the steering wheel. <laughs> and I'm, like, on my way, like, I'm on the on-ramp to the freeway. And, like, it just, like, boom, boom, er, you know, and I, like, pull over while I have this <laughs> table on my head, pinning me against the steering wheel. And literally, that was the moment where I'm, like, I quit. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't care about this yeah. anymore. Like I am so over this. Jeez. Um, and then I had, uh, actually did go to a different church, but that was a totally different thing. Um, that was because Foothills planted a church, and I was already in my like last. Sure, two, I was already in my last two John, weeks. John's been holding that story. Oh my in gosh. the back of his head. <laughs> but um, so then I went to a different church, but it was all part of the plan. I was already in my two weeks. You were already progressing and moving forward, right? Like you I said. was already progressing and moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, but. Anyway, that story has nothing to do with it. I was not yet fat, mm -hmm. but I had fitness and health were like healthy to me was like, hey, how I didn't even think about health. So when I was in high school, um, I took bo I took um, weight training mm -hmm. and that was my P.E. So it was like but, uh, that wasn't every year, though, right? Yeah, it was every year. You took it every year? I took it for three years. Oh, nice. The first year, everyone has to take PE. You have to take PE, yeah. And then you take your, you get to choose after that. And um, See, you chose. I was like, I don't want to do any physical activity. Yeah. <laughs> you had to do at least one more year. So I did one more year of something else. Oh, no, I did all three years. That's funny. Um, that and was your elective. My right? sophomore year, I chose team sports mm -hmm. as like my elective. And one of the things we did was, this was like in the very beginning of the year. And one of the things we did was... We played the first game we were playing was basketball. Oh, no. and it was like it was like there were probably eight teams chosen. So, you know, the typical like two team captains go up. You, 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 yeah. you, you. There was like at least eight because we had so many courts and then all the captains started choosing their people. I was not picked last out of two teams. I was picked last out of eight <laughs> teams. How did they know that you would be so bad? Because I, I was a white kid. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's true. You know there what I mean? Like, there we, wasn't very many white kids that went to our high school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was the white kid, and um, I have long hair because I'm emo. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, John. And so yeah. I had a, I had long hair. I had a lip ring. My hair was dyed straightened black. It. You straightened it. Straightened it black, <laughs> long hair with a lip ring, and they were like, "Yeah, we're not going to pick him for a basketball." You didn't want to be there anyways. And so, um, <laughs> exactly. And so then they, um, I was chosen last, and I was like, oh, this I is. I would pay money this to is watch. This is great. A I'm going video. to weight training now. Yep. I would pay money to watch a video of you playing basketball then. No, you can um, just film me play basketball now. <laughs> yeah, it's about Because the same. it literally is the same exact skill level. <laughs> uh, it, it yeah, is but like, I want to see, I want to see the straight and black hair and the There lip is ring. nothing, nothing. <laughs> that like makes me feel more inadequate in life yep. than trying to play basketball <laughs> yeah. with people. Same here. Because I don't have depth perception and I just don't have <laughs> skills. <laughs> Even when you throw a football, man. I know. It's bad. He like does the whole thing where he lifts his leg. And it's, it's cute. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's really cute. I'm sure that's what Sam says. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I also used to play softball in school. <laughs> and I was actually pretty good at that, uh -huh. surprisingly. But every time the they would get ready to pitch it, I would like put my hair back with my hands because it was in my eyes uh -huh. 
And then everybody like, oh, it's the hair. Watch <laughs> out. It's the hair. And I was like, guys, stop making fun of me. <laughs> but again, I wasn't yet fat yet. Yeah. Ten years ago. You I was getting fat because I was just out of high school. And um, I was still had all my eating habits, uh, that of a high schooler. But I wasn't doing weight training every day. Mm-hmm. I did not go to the gym after I graduated high school for a while. Do you think you were eating more, too? Probably. Uh, I yeah, because I had... Think, well, well, think about it. I got, a, I got a job yeah. at 16. The moment I could get a job, I got a job. Um, and so I've always, I always had just a little bit of money where I could like buy my own food because that was the only way I was going to be able to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, but like eat what I wanted. How about that? It was the only way I was going to eat what I wanted yeah. because there's no way a mom would be like, yeah, you can have a carne asada burrito every single day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just eating like whatever. Literally, I, there was no like, there was no discipline in what I was eating. There wasn't even, th- you didn't even think about it though. No, no, it was, this is what I want to eat now. And then this is what I want to eat now. And then this is what I, like, there was yeah. no like, well, I had this earlier today, so I probably should. Nope. It was all just like, here's what I'm in the mood for right now, mm-hmm. which um, wasn't Chipotle yet. That was it. Was Taco Bell? <laughs> yeah, it was Taco Bell, it was and then Taco and then the and, carne asada and then the the Mexican shop that was down the street. From there my was house. one time, and I'll always remember this story because it's so funny to me. Me and John, uh, we were with our mom, and we were going to a music shop. And but before we got there, we got burritos, and I got a California burrito because I like to have the French fry. California burrito is essentially a carne asada burrito with French fries inside of it, right? And John, for some reason, he doesn't like those. I don't know what's wrong with him, but he didn't like them. They make they make them different. They make the California burrito and the carne asada different. They like put different sauces in them okay. at Valerio's. Oh, okay. And I don't like the California burrito sauce or whatever oh, okay. it is. Okay. Well, so for me, I I whatever it didn't really matter to me. But so we got the burritos, and uh, when you look at them on the outside, you can't tell they're any different. You can't. You, they look exactly the same. Yeah. So, and some context. John David still eats like a freaking <laughs> lawnmower <laughs> chewing grass. Yeah, I eat really fast. I eat really fast. And so <laughs> I I'm, was, a, I'm about two bites in. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> this isn't the burrito I wanted. <laughs> and meanwhile, I was halfway through. Over halfway. <laughs> yeah. You like had the butt left of yeah. the burrito. That's it. And I'm like, I don't, this isn't the burrito I wanted. I don't like this. And I'm like, hey, let's trade. And I look <laughs> and you're like done with the burrito. <laughs> In the back seat, oh. I was so mad at he you. He was so was like, mad. You, you freaking that was that was the closest I think John ever got to making fun of my weight. Oh, I was so mad. Like I could feel I that. Just, I don't think you said anything. I don't but think I, remember I, don't think I, I did either. I felt really bad, but at the same time, I was <laughs> I was laughing because of how mad he got. But it was like a nervous laughter, you know. <laughs> um, but that was funny. Uh, sorry, I t- took over your story. No, that no, you were that was me. That was my funny. my body was like it was. Hey, um, it was kind of like. The guy who was a jock in high school and then rode that fa- fame for a while. So they were like, you definitely used to lift, but it didn't exist anymore. Yeah. That was like me. But you weren't a jock. Ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. Except for the fact that I wasn't a jock and no one. So that was I a had, really bad yeah. example. <laughs> it was just, okay, I was getting there. <laughs> I was on the road to um, overweightness. Yeah. How about you? Uh, so, so ten I ten years ago. Ten you, years ago, you graduated in ten. So yeah. you were a junior. So I was a junior in high school. Man, it's crazy to think of that. Uh, as far as how my body looked, I mean, I was very overweight at this point. Um, I would say I, I think I might have been the biggest person at the school. Um, and so this was. This was like a year after I started playing drums. So at this point, I was full on like one hundred percent drummer was my identity it's kind of how like what i identified as and i was in i was in my first band called wholehearted commitment and so it was like a christian rock band i guess i mean there's like it was like a i don't even know what kind of genre it was it's like similar to paramore i guess would be our was probably our biggest uh uh inspiration and but yeah so i was i mean there's there's not really much to say when you're in high school i kind of just ate whatever i didn't really think about it i think that i I actually put on I mean I was I would I was gaining weight all throughout my pretty much my childhood and so it was pretty steady in high school it was pretty steady but once I got out of high school was when it like really got fast fast uh because I think I had again more freedom because when you're in school you you have can't, to walk to class. Yeah, well, not even not even that. It's like you only really eat like because again, we didn't have much money, so it's not like I had a bunch of food with me at school. Yeah, and so you only I would only eat at lunch, right? 
Um, so that's from you know from nine to two to or three is the only time you're eating. It's one time during that, right? And so I would uh, eat whatever I had at lunch, but that was about it. So I think that that's kind of helped what helped me not gain weight super super fast. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think I would say probably during summer I would probably gain weight a little bit faster. But at the same time, I don't know, it might have negated because I was a lot more active in summer because I would skate everywhere and bike everywhere. And so, like, I was I was definitely, like, the – I was the big guy that could still kind of move. I was never really, really immobile. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, I was pr- – towards the end, I was pretty – I was getting there, yeah. definitely, because I wasn't skating as much anymore. Um, I wasn't – yeah, I was just a lot more sedentary. But up until that point, I was, like – I would think of myself as the the big guy that can move and like can, that can surprise people with how mm-hmm. fast I am, yeah. right? Uh, I would uh, I skated a lot of places, and I remember as I would skate places, people would kind of like I could see people looking at me like, "What the heck? That three hundred pound kid is like skateboarding." Yeah. Like, um, so I kind of enjoyed that, and then on top of that, right, like DDR, I would play that. Um, so yeah, I mean, during during so they'd see you go by, they'd be like, "That's no moon." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That, that's John David. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of, I guess, where I was 10 years ago as far as, like, you know, where my body was. When you're in high school, you just have less. There's not as much free time, you know? So. Okay. So what was my mindset 10 years ago was that I was <laughs> – I for sure thought I'd be married at 18. Just – that's like that's like church 101 is like, hey, guys, you graduated high school – now it's time to start thinking about your wife and your uh-huh. kids. Like, forget, you know, forget, get a career. Your career should be that you serve the church forever. <laughs> um, well, at least where, where you wh- were. Where, because, like, yeah. you were an intern and, like, in your head you were going to go from intern to whatever, worship to staff pastor member, to, like, whatever to it whatever, might be, right? Yeah, yeah. So that, that makes sense. That's funny, though. <laughs> and so it was like, forget developing skills that are going to help you later in your career. Um, forget whatever, like make sure that you find your wife and marry her now. Um, you'll figure out everything later. And so I was constantly on the like, all right, <laughs> you're on the prowl. Hey, hey what's up? How's uh-huh. it going? And like, I was like, um, I was, I've not, I am not like the fact that I work out put like on the scale from one to 10 on attractiveness, the fact that I work out and like am relatively fit brings me to at least a six or at most a six. Mm -hmm. So before working out, I was probably a four walking Mm. around. You know what I mean? Maybe a three (laughs) (laughs) walking around thinking that like I'm the bee's knees (laughs) and like trying to flirt with girls and stuff. And they're just like, Oh, you get away with it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm just like, Hey, how's it going? What's up? How are you doing? Like I look back on some pictures and I'm just like, (sighs) dude, some of them, Oh my gosh. They're so bad. They're so So, good. So, um, cause mine are like, I'm so overweight that it's like, whoa, you know, you look like a different person. Yeah. Like for you, it's like, you were just, you were, you were pretty, you ended up getting pretty overweight, but it was just like, you just like, like, there's the word that I love. It's called gumpy. Yeah. Like you just look so gumpy yeah, and I just don't. like, so like, and it's like, I'm here. I am. I'm this worship leader at a church. Um, people know me because I'm on stage. Um, and that was like my, that was it. Mm-hmm. That's what I had working for me. Yeah. But I was like working that as much as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, <laughs> he'd go up to girls like, hey, you see me on stage up there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want me to sing you a song? <laughs> Let me go ahead. It's a worship song, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I don't, that's all I know. I don't, I don't listen to secular music. <laughs> yeah. How dare you ask me to play Jason Mraz, <laughs> Jack Johnson. Oh, no, I don't know. Stairway to heaven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think my mindset was I was a lot younger. I was 10 years younger. I was a lot more confident in the wrong things. And I thought that I like, you always hear people say like, Oh, you know, when you're young, you think you have it all together. You think, you know, everything. And you're always like, no, I don't think I didn't think that. And then I look back at myself 10 years ago and I go, yeah, I thought I had it all figured out. I thought I knew everything. And like, boy, was I wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, my mindset was not one of a champion or well it was of a champion but it was like not really not based in reality yeah, like, it wasn't based in reality based on anything you've done in the past exactly it was just kind of this like everything will work out mm-hmm. and well and it's hard when you're younger right because you don't have any like 
Because, like, I mean, I get in America, I'm not, I don't think this is as big of a deal in other countries, but in America, like, graduation of high school is, like, this huge milestone for us, right? And I think in other countries, it's like, well, you're supposed to do that. Yeah. And now that I look back, I kind of feel that way. I'm like, why do we make it such a big, like, you should graduate high school. Like, that should be, that's kind of all you're doing at the time. I get there's, you know, some people, there's, if you have really big family issues, again, that it can be a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, for most people, your only thing you're doing at that time is going to school. And so, like, it's just like you almost it's almost like you're pushed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you 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 have this confidence, but it's not really based on anything you've done up until then, at least for at yeah. least for you or for us, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely glad that I've grown a lot in 10 years. Yeah. What was your mindset like? I was 100 percent. Like I said, I was a drummer. And so for me, that's that's what I that was my plan. Like people always ask. Uh, you know, if you weren't doing YouTube and stuff like what you're doing now, what would you be doing? And, you know, honestly, like, say if drums didn't work out, like, I don't know where I would be because I was never super good in school. Uh, like, I went to college for a year and I struggled. So I have, a, you know, I have a couple learning disabilities. Um, the biggest one is, like, ADD. And I know it's like, oh, everyone has that. But for me, it's like, it's it's legit. Like, Right, you know how I am. Yeah. Like I can read a book for about twenty minutes, and that's it. Like that's all. And I, I try too. Like I really try and focus. Twenty minutes is like that's all I got. Mm -hmm. And even when I'm watching a movie, like I'll end up doing other stuff. I'll end up like checking my phone, or I'll end up like getting up and doing. Like I, I really struggle with like staying focused. That's why I think I like doing the podcast so much because I like, force myself yeah. to like be focused and be present on a conversation. Uh, so like for me, I was. I would think about it and I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. Like, but the only thing that I, that I knew I wanted to do was like, I wanted to be a drummer. So for me, like I thought, okay, I'm going to be like, I didn't see my, like, obviously my, my dream goal was that I was going to be in a band that made it right. Like we, I was going to have a band that I started from the beginning and mm -hmm. we would somehow get famous. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That didn't work out. <laughs> but, like, so then as I was playing more drums and realizing, you know, the bands I was in, I actually ended up being in a band that I actually really, like, I thought we made some pretty good music. We were, we never really went anywhere. It was called mm -hmm. Sound, that was Soundboard. Yeah. That was, like, a rap, uh, rock, hip-hop kind of mm, fusion band. Uh, similar to, like, if you want to say, like, Blink-22, maybe, like, Limp Biscuit, like, more metal was infused in it. Mm -hmm. um, and we, like, played a couple shows, and, like, I really liked what we did, but we just... We were all kids that didn't have much money, so it's not like we could put much into what we were doing. And it's hard to start like band stuff when you, you know, it's you're starting from zero. Yeah. Um, so like you know, I would kind of think about it, and so I, I, in my head, I was like, okay, if I'm not able to be in a band and make it that way, which honestly I would start to think about, it and I would, I would be like, do I even really want that? Because like I would think about touring, and I was at this point I was already getting pretty big. I would think like do I really want to tour? Because like, right when you start touring, you're in a van. Yeah. You have nowhere to shower. And I would think about how much I would sweat when I'd play. And there's already a stigma against big people, right? When, like when you're bigger, everyone's, oh, they probably smell. Mm -hmm. um, and I really felt that way. Like I was always super nervous about smelling because I already sweat so much. Yeah. Luckily it didn't smell that much, but I was like always worried about that. So I'd be like, what if, like I would literally, like we were talking at one point about maybe going on like a little mini tour with me and my band. And like my first question was like, where are we going to shower at? Like, yeah, but that was like all I cared about because yeah. I was so nervous. Um, so I was thinking about that. And I was like, I don't know if I even really want to tour because that doesn't sound very good. So I, then I was like, okay, I'll be a studio musician, which a studio musician is, is basically you you work at a studio and say there's a say Sh Shakira comes right and she's gonna record a new album, and she doesn't like, she doesn't tour with a band or whatever, or she tours with a band but they're not her studio band. They're just a tour band. Yeah. And so then they have studio musicians that work at the studio, and you say, oh, I need a drummer for this song. You get a studio musician. Usually they're really, really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. They're maybe not super flashy, but they kill it. And so I was like, that could be really cool. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, so that's kind of where I was, you know, mentally. Like 10 years ago, I was like, maybe I'll be a studio musician. And again, this was <laughs> false confidence because I'd only been playing drums for a year. Yeah. But like, that's all I cared about was playing drums. Yeah. And so that's what I was like, well, I found something. Because up until that point, there was nothing that I became like relatively good at. Like, I played flag football for a few years tried out for the football team a couple times got made fun of i kind of told that story here on the, the podcast got made fun of basically got laughed off the field so that was like heart heartbreaking but i was never it's not like i was super good anyways right so 
drumming was the first thing that I put my mind to that I was like, whoa, I'm excelling at this pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I felt really confident about that. Again, even like I, st I kind of haven't even played much the past, like I would say four or five years, but it's still something that I love doing and I, I love being able to do it. And I definitely want to uh, do it a lot more coming up and hopefully I'll, I'll have a situation that when, like, even if I have to get like electronic drums, that'd be great. Like if I had something, you know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of like, I had all this confidence that I was going to be in the music industry at some point. But I had n nothing to back that up, and no reason. Like I, could, I, I still can't even read music. <laughs> like yeah. I just play by ear. And so, if you're a studio musician, that is not gonna fly. Like you have to be very like sound at every single aspect of your instrument. And so that's kind of where I was, I guess. Um, we like both kind of picked up our instruments relatively quick. Like mm -hmm. we with the guitar class that I took. This is not. This is not about me, and more about how uninformed and how unorganized the guitar class I was in was. But it was like a school year kind of thing. And you'd show up every week and you'd take classes and get guitar. And I, I started with zero knowledge of guitar. And by the end of the year, I was one of the leaders of the class. See, that was really cool, though, because I remember I, remember I ended up doing it, too, because uh -huh. I was like, you got a free guitar. I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really cool. That was one, one of the things was if you went into the class and I think you had to like do a few and they had to see that you were actually serious. They had like these, they were relatively cheap guitars, but I think how did not they, how relatively did, cheap. They were cheap guitars. Yeah. How did it work though? Who like, how did, who donated those? So it was the church bottom. Cause okay. It was put on by the church, the church bottom. You were able to borrow them. And then if you could play five songs by the end of the year, you got to keep the guitar. Okay. Um, if you not, if not, you technically had to give it back, mm -hmm. but yeah. So, um, that's how it worked. And so I was determined to learn those five songs. I learned them really quick. Um, and then by the end of the year, I was like one of the leaders. It's so the cool class. that that's, that's how you started playing. Yeah. Like imagine if that never happened. I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. Considering whoever... multiple jobs that I've had have revolved around yep. my ability to play guitar. Absolutely. And the then... job you have right now, it's part of it. Yeah. Yep. That's so cool. I know. Like, whoever's idea that was that ended up coming into fruition and whoever, cause obviously right. The church, the, you know, they get donations by a lot of people. I'm sure it would be cool. Imagine if it was somebody who was like, I am going to give you this money and I want, this is my idea or something like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's pretty cool. I remember I went to the class because I saw Jean had the guitar and I was like, that looks fun. And, uh, yeah, wasn't was, for me, I did yeah. really bad. Yeah. That wasn't the only class that you saw me having fun and decided to join. What was the other one? CrossFit. Uh, that's true. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> copy Jean a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when we were younger, Jean, so this was good Charlotte era, like uh -huh. Hot Topic. Yeah. You wore pants that had like chains and beads and bedazzles on them. Um, and Jean had these really cool shorts. For him, they were like regular, like maybe a little bit longer than knee shorts that had like Oh my all gosh. of these chains on them. Chains and zippers, zippers and pockets. Yes. And, they were uh, like, if, if Good Charlotte made a music video, one of them would be one yeah. at the time. You know, this was oh like maybe like mid-2000, like 2004, they were the, 2005. No, they were, it was 2003. Okay, yeah, 2003, show. yeah. And so Jean would wear them, but again, I was and already... I had, as I had dyed black hair or I had dyed pink, pink hair, hair or yeah. I had dyed blue hair, whatever, and I would spike it all the way around. Liberty um, spikes. Liberty spikes, and then I would wear the studded belt with the studded mm -hmm. bracelet with the rubber bands that had a whole bunch of different colors, with the band shirts, with the big baggy shorts and pants, with the big skate shoes. That was me. Or Converse. Or Converse. Yep. Yeah, that was me. And so, Jean, again, I did not dress that cool. In Well, I thought it was cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I thought In it was In quotes, cool. yeah. I wore, We're you using know, that term loosely yeah, here. I wore what mom would buy, which was from Walmart probably. Yeah. You know? Um, and so I would just steal Jean's clothes and I already fit into them. Yeah. And so these shorts that we're talking about. So I'm in eighth grade. He's in sixth grade. And yeah. That's a big change in body. Yeah. You know what I mean, especially since I was a little puberty kid at seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. You like got pretty big. Like you were. Like growth spurt? Yeah. Or like thick? No, no, no. Growth spurt. Like okay. you got taller. Like you at the end of eighth grade versus me, I looked way. One, I was younger too. Yeah. Because I, I started, like I graduated high school at 17 years yeah. old. So there was even a bigger gap. But so Jean had these shorts that I just literally basically stole and like made them mine. Yeah. And he hated it so much. Well, I would get mad at you every time I liked a band and then you ended up liking them. Yep. Because we shared a room. So yep. I'd be listening to him. And mm -hmm. then you would be like, yeah, I like this band too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what am I supposed to do? What? <laughs> um, or then I would like, you know, start doing CrossFit, and then you'd be like, 
okay, I want to do that too. Yeah. Or I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to start wearing extra large t-shirts. And you're like, yeah, I like the way that looks. I'm going to yep. do that too. Yep. That's what I'm doing right now. That one's recent. That yep. one's like within a week. That was like, yeah, a few days ago. Yeah. yeah whatever. <laughs> um, but it's cool. I mean, I used to like, here's the thing. Like, I would love to have a whole episode about this, but we can't. But like my Enneagram is type four. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the big things about your Enneagram type four is that it's, it, they're called the individualist. <laughs> like they want to have their own thing. And like, not only do they want to have their own thing, like they wish they were the only four in existence. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that someone else is a four, it's like, yeah, they're not really a four. Like I'm the, <laughs> I'm the true four. They're like, can, the well, can you explain four. what an Enneagram is? Maybe I, if some, if some, just a, a the, real quick, this is someone's listening and they have no idea what you're talking about. Like what so they Enneagram need to start talking about. Enneagram stands for nine points. Um, that's Enneagram. It's nothing like a pentagram. It's nothing demonic or whatever. <laughs> Christians get really weird and they hate the Enneagram and they think it's some spiritual thing. And it's not. Well, it is, it is a personality test. Mm-hmm. It is nothing spiritual. It is nothing demonic. It is nothing like that. It literally stands for nine pointed object because guess what? There are nine Enneagram types. So um, what your Enneagram is, it is, it's your personality. It's your persona. It's almost like the, the same root word for persona is where we get mask. And it's, so it's like, how do you deal with the outside stimulus that happens in life, whether when you were a kid or something, it's how did you learn to cope with it? And there are nine main ones. Mm -hmm. Um, I, Oh, can I remember them off the top of my head? Number one is you're the reformer slash perfectionist. So you Mm -hmm. believe in morality. You believe in finding morality and seeking it out and then being like, like making lists and making sure that you, you want to reform everything you want. You believe that you can make things better out of a moral obligation. Two is called the helper. So you find your worth in helping people out. Three is the achiever. They're the typical American entrepreneur. Four is the individualist, which is me. Five is (laughs) just me. Yeah. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Um, (laughs) Five is the, I don't remember what it's called, investigator. but investigator. They're thinking, so they think, they process everything through their head, and that's how they, they go through the world. Um, six is, what's it called? The loyalist. Loyalist, yep, I know that. Six is the loyalist, and they're basically, they have a very like. This is technically what I am. Yeah, and they have a very reactionary view to things. It's like they're seeking safety, and they're seeking protection, and they find that through staying loyal to someone or something. Seven is the enthusiast. They just want to have a party all the time. They like. That's life is a party. They want to have a lot of fun. Um, eight is the challenger. So they see um, institution or they see um, things that are going wrong and they, instead of running from it, they attack it. They are challenged by it. And then nine is the peacemaker where they're, if they find how they deal with outside stimulus is they just merge with it so that they're not, there's no conflict. There's no nothing. They're at peace. Okay. So that's the, sh- that's the short of the Enneagram. If you guys are interested, you can take a test online about it. I don't recommend taking a test. I recommend going through the website, reading all of them and see which one your heart and your soul reaches to, which is a very four thing of me to say the about one, that. The website that I just found is called Enneagram Institute. Enneagram Institute so is a good one. I would recommend it. I'm going to spell it out for people that maybe don't want it. E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M-I-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-E dot com. You can also probably spell it wrong on Google and Google will be yeah. like, did you mean? I guess that's what I'll do. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. what I would do. Yeah. But that's, that is impressive that you remembered all those without looking at I'm it. I'm telling you, it is like all my mind is focused on these past. Really? We talked about the Enneagram. Yeah, Christmas. Over Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. And I've st- I'm still studying it, learning it, figuring it out for myself and for others. So, um, there you go. S- super quick uh, description of the Enneagram for you. So, guys. as so think about that. Now, going back to what we were talking about, I have this younger shadow constantly being like, Yeah, I'm like you too. Yeah, I'm like you too. Yeah, I'm like you too. <laughs> and I'm like, Dude, just stop. Like, you're not like me. I am myself. No one can be like me. I am the only true me. Well, it says right here, right, on the, on the website, it says basic fear that they have no identity or personal significance. Yeah, and exactly. Like, my identity, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, I, of course, I had no clue about Enneagram. I didn't know what that was yeah. then. But I just knew that for so And, like, so one of the things about a four is they strive for authenticity in mm-hmm. everything. They don't want to, like, if you, it's like, hey, let's get sushi. No, let's get Chinese, and I want Chinese. It's like, I'm being inauthentic to myself. <laughs> if I want <laughs> sushi, is, if I want Chinese, and I decide to go get sushi. Okay, let's, 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 act, let's actually use, let's use a real example. That is, like, a dumb example. Let's use a real example of how you are when we're going out to eat, and you want Chipotle. <laughs> and you guys don't want Chipotle? 
I get mad and, shut, yeah, and I shut down. You get so mad. And then I look at where the closest Chipotle yeah. is and I'll get Chipotle. He always, he always tries to be like, well, like, what about this place? And I'm like, oh, that sounds good. He's like, there's a Chipotle right next to it, so I'll just go there. <laughs> so I'll just, like, what if we just eat outside and I get Chipotle and you guys do that? But that's like a dumb example. But like, but you're, it's true. you're seeking for inauthentic. I mean, you're seeking, you're seeking for authenticity, um, which in other terms um, is you don't want to be a poser. Mm-hmm. Which is like very big in my eighth grade mind. Oh yeah, and like you know, what I mean, like the whole like good Charlotte blah blah mind is like which they. I mean, to be fair, they probably were somewhat posers. Too, yeah, right? um, um, yeah. To Absolutely. to what they were posing, which is like that punk rock world. Mm-hmm. Like they are not that. Um, but it's the whole idea of no one really understands me. Um, the simple plan. I'm just a kid, and life yeah. is a nightmare. <laughs> I'm just a kid, like, and life. Like that was like that was like your. Sp- you, this is me. Like yeah. they understand me. Wow, mm. this is so amazing. Um, so that's why I would like it would be unreasonably frustrating to me to have <laughs> you like copying me and stuff. But it was like an attack on my identity, which is not what you were doing. You were just like, yeah, I like that too. Cool. And for me, it's like, <gasps> no, I don't have identity. <laughs> you can't do. I this. don't have a sense of self worth or value. I wonder if that's why you would go. You like went so far in certain things that I could like couldn't follow. Yeah, probably. Like when you started wearing like really, really tight pants. Yeah, uh, they literally didn't can, make them. We my can call size. them girl pants. They were they were girl yeah, pants. Yeah, they but were. But I just didn't want to, you know, be uh, rude. Because now they're called skinny jeans, and yeah. I have multiple well, pairs of skinny jeans. They didn't even. Yeah, me too. Though they didn't have <laughs> yeah, skinny jeans. Of course then. they do. Yeah, yeah. And so you literally would wear girl pants, and I was just like, well, I can't even fit in those, so I guess I won't wear those. I remember one time I went with a friend who was like, hey, I'll buy, he was like an older guy. He was like kind of like trying to mentor me and stuff. And he's like, I'll buy you some clothes because he knew that, you know, our situation. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go to American Eagle. He's like, all right, cool. And I walk right into the girl section. He's like, um. Mm, I'm not going to buy you clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want these jeans. And he's like, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was like this, like, I've made he a honestly was like conflicted mm-hmm. at that thing. Um, but again, it's like, I, if I wear pants and this is still to this day, so this is like 15 years later. Mm-hmm. Okay. If I wear pants, that have too much like flow around my ankles. Yeah. I can't stand I'm it. just like, Ugh. this isn't me. Like people are looking at me or like, I feel bad because like Sam will buy me shirts. Well, she used to. She doesn't, <laughs> she, she well, doesn't it's like, anymore. It's like trying to buy Jean clothes is like how most guys feel about buying their girlfriend's clothes. Yeah. It's just like, mm, yeah, yeah. nah. And so she'd buy me idea. shirts and she'd be like, this looks so cute. And I would wear it. I'd be like, if someone met me for the first time and they saw me wearing the shirt, they would have the wrong impression of who <laughs> I am. You know? And it's like, no, it's just a shirt. Relax, bro. Yeah. Like, I understand that. But like, to the core of who I am, I'm just like, this is not, this is inauthentic to how I express myself. And so I feel like it's wrong. And it's so, I mean, I recognize that out loud it sounds ridiculous, but... That's the thing, though, is, like, how, how often do you say things out loud versus how long do you repeat, how much do you repeat stuff in your own head? Well, yeah, I mean, you talk to yourself way more than you... Like, Absolutely. Like, you speak inwardly way more than you speak yep. outwardly. And so, um, that's Without why... Without a doubt. Like, a lot of the times, a lot of the power of lies and things that, like, like, especially with, like, diet and stuff like that, where you go, like, I want cake, I want cake. And then you go out loud, you say, I want cake. You're like, uh, well... Yeah, I mean, you're just like, mm-hmm. I don't want cake. You say it out loud. Or something, it's like, or I want to do this. Or like, I want, you're thinking, I want cake, I want cake. And you could say something out loud, like, I want to live a healthy lifestyle or something. Mm-hmm. And it's like, by speaking it, it gives it a lot more power. Or even, than, I'm reading a book called Atomic Habits right now. And they, they kind of talk about that, where it's like, uh, if you speak things out and speak about not just the action, but the, the consequence, right? Yeah. I want to eat a piece of cake. And again, there's nothing wrong with having cake every once in a while. That's not what we're trying to say. But it's like, uh, you know, I want to have a piece of cake and that's going to end up, you know, derailing my progress. Yeah. Then that helps you be like, okay, it's not worth it. Yeah. But that's a whole nother thing we could talk about. Yeah. Well, we probably will talk about mm-hmm. in like November or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Um, so the last thing. All right. 10 year challenge. <laughs> we talk. This whole episode is a 10 year challenge. Yeah, I know. Basically. Um, what were your goals 10 years ago? Did you have any? And like, so if someone 10 years ago would be like, all right, 2019, what happened in your life? What do you think would have happened? Oh, man. Ooh, that's hard. Well, I mean. Do you think you'd be alive? I, that, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I, I mean, 26 right now. So, yeah, I probably think I would have been alive. But honestly, okay, this is going to get kind of deep. But I, I honestly probably would have thought that I'm going to be bedridden by this point because of how like fast I was gaining weight every year. Like every year was a new shirt size, right? Every mm-hmm. year was bigger pants. Every year was whatever. And so I, it really felt like every, 
every year that went by, I just got larger. And like that, it really became part of just like as time goes on, I get bigger. And like that's what I thought. So mm-hmm. I probably would have thought that I was like bedridden. Um, but at the same time, right, like at when I was, you know, a junior in high school, I probably would have, you know, hoped that I was playing like drums again, like I said. Uh, but I think I would have been. Like, I would have been, it's funny because I was saying how, like, you know, graduating shouldn't be that big of a deal. But for me, it was because of, you know, the learning disabilities that I had. High school was really tough for me. Um, I was really lucky that our school was very, like, forward about helping kids that had disabilities and kind of helping, but at the same time trying to push them along. (laughs) Like, our high school was really good at being like, hey, you, uh, we want to make you graduate, so take these classes and quotes where I would just sit in front of a computer and like get a whole semester done in like four days. Yeah. Uh, So like there was like probably six classes that I classes again in quotes that I took in about how long it would should take to take one. Yeah. So I was like really actually nervous about not graduating because my GPA was never very good. Uh, So I think I would have thought that like realistically I would have been working, you know, Somewhere where it's like entry level position, like say it's Walmart, right? I have nothing against Walmart. Our mom works there, right? Mm-hmm. But like I would have gotten a job there and just tried to work my way up as much as I could. Like yeah. that's pretty much all I had. Like I, I, I was not one of those people that like if I was thinking realistically, if I had like my own dreams again, like I said, to be a session musician or something like that, studio yeah. drummer. But like realistically, that's probably where I would have been. That's kind of what my mindset was at the time. Like I had no. Because of how many times I had like tried to lose weight, and I get again, I know it might seem like I'm I'm like attaching weight to success, but I for me it really kind of was that way because of how trapped I was in my body and like how I really felt like I it wasn't just the weight though it was like the weight and then where we come from like ec- economically I guess you could say I just felt like I had I had nothing going for me uh, so yeah that's kind of where I was would have been I know it's kind of deep but you know whatever. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, I don't know if I even thought about 10 years in the future. Like, I don't even think about yeah, 10 years in the future now, which I should. Yeah. Like, that's good. But, like, 10 years ago where I thought I would be at 29, like, for sure I thought I would be um, a traveling worship leader, like, <laughs> famous with a CD deal. and Like <laughs> like David Crowder or something like yeah, that. Like, <laughs> yeah, like Chris Tomlin, like, move over. You know, like, I thought for sure I would be, like, I wasn't doing anything to reach that goal except for leading worship every week. Like I thought maybe I thought I'd probably be the worship leader at Foothills, Mm -hmm. you know, which is this like one of the bigger churches in our area um, that I was attending. Um, Or at least the church, at least the church I went to, like maybe I like plant out of Foothills and then that church is doing really well and I'm the worship leader there or something. You know what I mean? Like I thought something along those lines, I for sure thought like it'd be worship. It'd be the church. Um, and it would be based on my skill and ability and how good I was. Um, and it wasn't really based on progression or skill learning, like getting better. Um, which the irony is like now I'm working at a church and it like worship is a part of it. Yeah. You know I mean? Like, but it's not the road that I thought it would have been. And you know, a lot of, you see that, like that image where it's like, um, a lot of people think success is a straight line up, but instead it's like squiggly, squiggly, yeah. squiggly, 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 squiggly. <laughs> Um, and it's like, that is so true. Um, and, um, I think like if what I think about, like the look back on the last 10 years, like, and how, how can looking back on the past 10 years make me a better person? Right. Mm. Because I can look back and then not change anything about my life. And in 10 years, I'll look back and think, oh wow, the same exact thing. Um, and that's like sucks like that. That's not growing. Mm. Um, so if I can look back on the 10 years and how can I like become a better person out of that process is like, I can have a lot more grace for people on the journey because we all are trying to figure it out. We're doing the best we can with the knowledge we have, you know? And, um, if I were to see someone else 10 years younger than me and they've got all these plans and stuff, like instead of being harsh or instead of being critical or instead of being dismissive, but being like, okay, well, what's the next best thing we can do for you? Like, how can I help you in this journey where you're at? Is it like connecting you with someone who could really help you? Cool. Let's do that. Or is it like, let me maybe not criticize you before you even have a chance to redeem yourself. Like, I don't know. I think just having a lot more grace for people where they are, because it's not who you see today is not who they're going to be in 10 years. Yeah. 
but they will remember the way that you made them feel 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they will remember that. If you dismiss them, if you were rude to them, if you were whatever, they're going to remember that for 10 years. Maybe they're not going to hold on to it. It's not going to be like some like big wound that they're trying to overcome. That is giving yourself way too much credit. But they will remember 10 years ago when they talked to you, they felt like kind of discouraged mm -hmm. and they will not want you to be a part of their 10 years, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true because there's there's definitely people, certain people that I remember from, like, high school or whatever that I didn't I didn't necessarily deal with a lot of bullying. Mm -hmm. But I, there was definitely people that made me feel certain ways. And there was there's definitely instances and, and things I remember from high school that, you know, when, like, say a teacher was, like, kind of rude or whatever – uh, that I that I remember, and I know if I saw that person, I would it would come it would come up again. Would I treat that person bad because of that? Probably not. I don't think it would really matter to me anymore. Uh, but there's definitely like it's interesting because there's because like every once in a while I'll see someone that maybe hasn't seen me since I lost the weight, and I it's funny because sometimes I can tell that they're obviously they're excited that I lost the weight and they're they're proud or whatever it might be. But I I still do remember of like we weren't really that close before, mm -hmm. and like we didn't really talk that much, and so. It's it's in, it's interesting. Like that's a question I get a lot. Is like, oh, do people treat you differently? And I, I mean, yeah, but I I don't know. Like it doesn't really bother me that much. But at the same time, like, like kind of what you were saying is you remember how you feel. Yeah, and, and it you, might just be you may not even remember the encounter. Yeah, exactly. But you remember how you felt. Yeah, you remember when you see that person. For some reason, you go like that person felt disappointed in me or mm -hmm. whatever. Well, I don't not know. E it's not like, even that. It's yeah. almost like a feeling in like the pit of your stomach. Like yeah, you don't excitement or like, Ugh, I don't yeah, know about yeah. this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's not like a mental thing you're thinking. It's, it's deeper than that. Mm -hmm. It's like gut level. This is how the person makes yeah. you feel. Um, cool. I mean, that was the 10, I don't know. I, that was so simple of a thing, 10 year challenge, but I was just like thinking like, we are so different than we were 10 years ago and like so many other people and there are some really good things that come out of looking back on your 10 years like so for everyone who's listening like maybe just spend some time and think about what was your body like and that's like the most superficial of all yeah of them. But, but, uh, but yeah we like to talk about this but like that's what you can put on your instagram because you yeah. can't put your mindset yeah, exactly. on instagram you know you can put it in the caption but people probably aren't going to read it uh <laughs> yeah <seriously. laughs> you know that's not what instagram's for people want to scroll um but, like, you can put, what was your body like? What was your mindset like? And then what were your goals? And then what can you do today to make the next 10 years, like, oh, I'm proud of the person I was becoming instead of, like, oh, my gosh, that's embarrassing, yeah. you know? like Or even, and, like, say if 10 years is a little too much, say you're, like, 17 listening to this, maybe do five or three years, you know? Because, yeah, yeah. like, you're going to have a lot of change that's going to happen in that time. I would say the, the older you get, the less change probably happens. I mean, obviously, this is dependent on a bunch of things. But, yeah. like, when you're going from 7 to 17, you're going to have a lot more change than if you go from, you know, 30 to 40. Yeah, like. I think, yeah, and even, like, 17 to 27 is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then, like, 27 to 30, 37, it might be like, hey, I used to think it was all about me, but now I realize my family is the most important thing. You know, something like that. Like, I do, there still are a lot of changes. Um, I think that I, you know, your 20s are just a very volatile yeah. changing period. Yeah. And like, I went from 19 to 29. So that was like the journey of my 20s. I'm so glad I didn't get married at 19. Yeah. Because uh, I would not be the same person. And if, like, if the person I was seeking when I was 19, <laughs> like, let's just say they stayed the same. Again, yeah. it's a different variable because they would have changed in 10 years, too. But let's just say the person that I wanted at 19 was who I was married to today. I say you got the ideal, you got your ideal person yeah. right, at 19. Uh huh. Um, I don't think that we would get along. Yeah. I really don't. Like, I would be very frustrated by that person. Like, and it's just like, you know, just have grace. Have grace for yourself and have grace for that person. Well, and this is like a good thing to even think about, you know, if you're frustrated with your current situation, it's like, time goes on and things change, you know, and yeah. it doesn't, we're always so focused on, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, like physique wise, but like, we're so focused on how can I change fast? What's the fastest way? But again, like what matters is what is something that I can do for a long period of time? What, what is this going to look like in five years? What is this going to look like in 10 years? Uh, because it's, it's so easy to get focused on the day to day because again, we live life day to day. And so you're, you know, one day can feel really long and one day can feel really short, but hopefully all of us will be there here in 10 years from now and we'll be able to look back and be like, okay, uh, I thought this was a big deal, but it really wasn't. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't paying attention to this and it ended up being a really, really important thing in my life. So it's just interesting to reflect and it's always a good thing I think to do. Yeah. It makes me realize like 
the importance. Like, I wish I had a journal to look back at it 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, definitely. Because I would be interested in even the mundane. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, like, Taco Bell made me feel weird. You know what I mean? Like, 10 years ago or 10 years from the future, if it's writing that down. Of course, Taco Bell. I'd be like, like I'd be like, huh. Yeah, that's funny. You know, uh-huh. like whereas when you're writing it, you're like, "This is so stupid." Yeah, but like won- ten years in the past, in the future, you're like, "That's so funny that I wrote that down." Yeah, like to not dismiss how you're feeling in the moment because it does matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if because you know, like we always read people's journals from the past. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's less of a th- like people don't do that as much now because like it seems like almost it, well, I guess if you're in a I don't know, it seems like every important person that we learn about had some sort of journal. Yeah, you know. And now I, I don't know. I don't journal as I much have, as I should. I have so. so many unfinished journals. Yeah. So many. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for listening. Um, we're going to have a question that we ask at the end of every podcast, but we don't have it yet. Yeah. So this is going <laughs> to fill the place of where that question would be, of just me letting you know that eventually we're going to have a question. But yeah, our, our challenge is the 10-year challenge. Yeah. Like, look back on it. If you do end up doing a post about your mindset, about your goals, about your body... Tag us mm-hmm. at Jean Glaude at Obese to Beast, and then to use the hashtag Work for Change podcast, and we'll be able to see them, and we can build, we can continue the conversation. Yeah, thank you guys for listening. This was episode thirty-four of the Work for Change podcast. Peace, peace.